All right, welcome in. So today we are here to talk about the Jets' absolute disastrous season so far. And if I had to guess, I would say that before the year is over, or not before the year is over, but at the end of the year, Salah, Douglas, and Hackett and this whole administration is going to be fired. They're going to start from square one, and yeah, uh, because this just is not good enough. Like, it would be one thing if this team was being competitive. And for the past few years, the Jets' defense has been, you know, playing competitive football keeping them in games, but this team isn't even competitive anymore. They're losing by multiple scores each game. The defense can only do so much, and the defense is clearly being hung out to dry. This was a defense that in the beginning of the year made Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, and a few others. Hurts also look incredibly pedestrian. Now, just based on the fact that they literally can't do anything when the offense is trotting out Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle, every Sunday. It's just demoralizing for the defense, and they're just not figuring it out anymore. And honestly, why would they? Why would you want to be playing your heart out when you know that Zach Wilson is going to throw a pick six, or Tim Boyle is going to have, you know, a Hail Mary (laughs) at the end of the half that gets intercepted and run back for a touchdown. But anyway, um, I just want to talk about the Jets in a bigger picture and to see, you know, what missed as far as this hype train from this offseason. Let me just say, that the Jets without Rodgers are still an unknown commodity. But a big reason why I think this team has missed, and this was a huge, huge process missed by the Jets, I don't hate the idea of bringing Rodgers in. I don't. Even though I think he's soft, I've never been a fan of his. I do not like him. I think he's arrogant. I think he, you know, obviously I think quarterbacks need like that little arrogant, like, you know, kind of chip on their shoulder. I think it's good when you have a guy like that, but... Not one that goes on Pat McAfee every week and talks about, you know, I don't know, God knows what is going on inside his brain. Uh, But also, you know, just putting the organization publicly on blast. And by the organization, I mean Green Bay, by the way, uh, the past few years, you know, for failing to get him help as if Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones and a top three offensive line for the majority of that time period weren't good enough for him. Um. I don't know. I just don't like Aaron Rodgers. I never have. Uh, Not that I'm not, not that I'm like adversely cheering for him, but I've just never, or not that I'm adversely cheering against him. Sorry. Uh, But I just have never found a reason to become a fan of his. I, you know, he's an incredible player and he is one of the top five most uh, gifted quarterbacks to ever play the game. Undisputably. But, you know, he led the dynasty that never was in Green Bay. And then he took a step forward in 2020, uh, had a little career resurgence uh, in 2019 after Matt LaFleur was hired as the head coach, uh, looked washed in 2018. Matt LaFleur gets hired in 2019. They make the playoffs off the back of a very strong running game. 2020 and 2021 happen, and Rodgers has two MVP campaigns. And last year... I'm not sure what really went on. It seemed to be a mix of, okay, Rodgers was kind of done. And, you know, he had that injury thing. And that's the thing. I don't know why people this offseason were so convinced that a almost 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers was going to be able to lead the Jets to the promised land when, you know, we don't really know what he would have looked like with this team. And honestly, based on last year, I was anything but impressed with what I saw. And this did not feel, uh, this felt doomed from the get-go. If you ate this up because they were fun to watch on Hard Knocks, just know that your process missed and you need to learn from this because I never bought the New York Jets. There's literally a video on my channel saying the New York Jets are not as good as you think they are. And yes, they are a better team unquestionably with Rodgers instead of Zach Wilson. 75-year-old Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than anything Zach Wilson or Tim Boyle have to offer to the team. But a big reason why this was a huge miss by the Jets organization is because, like I said, I don't hate the idea of bringing him in, even though I think he's soft and I don't like him as a quarterback and I would never, ever let him be my quarterback as an NFL GM. If I were a GM, um, just based on literally everything that surrounds him, all the pettiness and the drama every offseason. The reason I think it was an absolute miss by the Jets to go after him was because he demanded that all his trash cans were also brought here with him, which, by the way, I think it's hilarious that he publicly 
trashes the organization of Green Bay, saying that he has no help. And then he tries to bring all the, you know, garbage cans that he was throwing passes to in Green Bay with him. Uh, Alan Lazard, game day inactive today on uh, against a team, you know, with a team that was starting Tim Boyle at quarterback. So if you thought, if the Jets thought he could offer literally anything to a quarterback that needed as much help as he could possibly get, he would have been active, and he wasn't. Uh, Four-year contract, by the way. Randall Cobb. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, this team's, the reason, a big reason why I, ne- I never bought into the Jets uh, even with the whole Rodgers thing, was because this team's skill position players outside of Brees and Garrett Wilson are absolutely laughable. And I know that if you take the top two skill position guys away from any team, it's probably not great, but it's a lot better than, you know, pretty much every other team has anything better to offer than Corey Davis, which, by the way, it was unfortunate that he retired. Uh, still, like I said, not really feeling good about him being my wide receiver too coming into the year. Uh, and then he retired. And then uh, Lazard, Cobb, uh, I know they waived Michael Carter not too long ago, but yeah. And then uh, Dalvin Cook, like washed Dalvin Cook. If he was worth literally anything to the Vikings, who have one of the thinnest running back rooms in the league this year, uh, and they still seemed to you know, have this, you know, addition by subtraction principle when they cut Cook, they would have kept him. But guess what? It's Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler's the guy there. I hope Dwayne McBride gets his shot because Madison is clearly not it. But the biggest reason of them all why this was not going to work out to begin with was because they did not hire, they did not sign any one particular player that was, that doomed this to begin with. They hired Nathaniel Hackett to run their offense. Now, I know that I'm a Broncos fan, and let me just put this up here. Um, Yes, I know we got beat by the Jets, and you know what? I like the Jets. I hope this does all work out for them. I'm a huge Jets fan. I have a Jets jersey hanging up in my room back in Colorado. But this was not going to work out, and anyone in Broncos country could have told you that this was not going to work out because of Nathaniel Hackett. First of all, anybody that tried to talk themselves into Hackett before this year uh, one is because everyone thought that Russell Wilson was washed, and it's true. Russell Wilson is washed, uh, nowhere close to being worth the trade or the contract that the Broncos gave him, and you know, definitely not a fan of how the Broncos just bent over to his demands last offseason. But also, uh, this team looked comically unprepared at points. This team looked terrible under Hackett. They looked very unprepared. They weren't playing well with one another. They weren't playing complimentary football, despite the fact that they have very good locker room culture, at least now. Uh, Yeah, so I could have told you that this was doomed to fail because of the Nathaniel Hackett thing. And people were saying, oh, he was the offensive coordinator in Green Bay. We don't know how much of the influence of Rodgers in the offense he actually had in Green Bay. That's the thing. It's because Matt LaFleur is an offensive-minded coach, and we don't know like who actually was the one calling all the shots there. One sec. That's the thing I wonder, is that why would you sign Nathaniel Hackett to be your offensive coordinator in the event that Aaron Rodgers does not come to Green Bay? So let's say Aaron Rodgers does not come to Green Bay. You're running an administration of Todd Downing, Nathaniel Hackett, and Zach Wilson at quarterback. Now, granted, they probably would have figured something out because uh, based on the way Zach Wilson has played the past few years, you cannot uh, trot him out at quarterback again. They thought... Tim Boyle was better, would offer something more than Zach Wilson did. So that tells you all you need to know about him. Uh, if 2022 and 2021 were not discouraging enough for you to be a Zach Wilson uh, believer. And oh yeah, by the way, don't look at the highest rated video on my channel. Just don't, I please don't. <laughs> um, but anyway, the NFL world treated Nathaniel Hackett like a make-a-wish kid after the Broncos lost to the Jets this year. And that part was so funny to me because the Jets defense uh, did all the work against the Broncos. The Broncos were beat by the Jets defense in a Brees Hall 75-yard run. Um, it seemed like the Jets were more concerned about winning the offseason than they were actually you know, putting a good product on the field. And uh, like I said, I said this earlier in the video, the Jets without Rodgers are still an unknown commodity. 
but Rodgers has hurt the Jets a lot more than he has helped them to this point because of all the trash cans that he has brought with him. And it's just not going to work out for the foreseeable future. I don't know who had a hand in this. I'm pretty sure it was Woody Johnson. I don't know how aggressive Joe Douglas was willing to be in getting Rodgers here. And like I said, I don't know what the solution would have been had Rodgers not come there. But I never bought the New York Jets. They're not good. And this hype train was just doomed to fail from the start. All right, that is going to do it for me. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.